60 miles per hour is what Stacy just said. You need to be in your shelter locations in northeastern Monroe County where that tornado warning is still continuing to move down to the southeast because this is really trucking along. And we have another area of rotation. Let's see. Uh, let's go to the tracker actually real quick. Let's jump to the tracker. Another uh, accident site with more damage off to the side uh, and still more along 96 from that earlier tornado warn storm that we were looking at uh, that had multiple reports of different uh, Actually, can we, can we take our tower cam, please? Can we take our tower cam, please, um, if, if it's possible? I don't know if that's something that we've got routed or not. Um, but if we're able to take our tower cam, that's something we're going to try and, and work on in for you. And I'm going to try and bring that up here for a second. Because where, there we go. Um, there's, that is some lowering in the cloud cover right there. That is a lot of lowering in the cloud cover that we can see from our tower cam right now, and I can see that's a bright lightning to go along with it. If you are in, let's see, if you are north of Southfield right now, I know there's not a ton of rotation on radar right now, but that is really low hanging at the moment. Yeah. Very strong. I don't, I can't tell directly if we've got rotation, but that is a low hanging spot. And it's dropping. Yeah, and it's trying to drop down a little bit there as well. So, wow. Whoa. Okay. So, if you're in the Southfield area right now, just kind of stay indoors, stay away from windows right now. And I would say if you can, head to a safe shelter location there with where that rotation is. We're okay in the building here. We're okay in the station on where that is, but just seeing where that is moving through right now, that's a very strong lowering. But I want to bring us back out to radar as well. I'm going to keep an eye on some of that data, and Stacy's going to keep an eye on that camp to see where that goes to. But let's bring us back out to radar to show you that main tornado worn cell that's going on down in Monroe County where we've got two separate spots of rotation. Let's see where that is. So east of Brownstown, heading toward Beaumont near Trenton. Actually, actually headed toward Trenton. We have another tornado worn cell. So we do. Now we've got two separate tornado worn storms. One moving toward the Estrell Beach area and another heading toward Trenton. If you're in Trenton right now, you need to be in shelter right now. And actually, as that continues to move through, if you're in Trenton, if you're in Gross Eel as well, Trenton and Gross Eel, you need to be in your tornado worn shelter right now because that is the strong area of rotation that goes with it. That one's moving southeast at 55 miles per hour. Southeast at 55. There's a debris signature with that one. We may have two separate touchdowns. We have another one that's right near Estrell Beach and another one right near Maple Beach. That would be two separate sites that we've got separate signatures for that match up with those two individual rotating spots right now. You've got each rotating spot. It's a little behind because it updates at a different rate than other parts of the Doppler radar imagery. But each of those two rotation spots moving southeast, you said? Yes. Southeast would match up with where we have both of these bright marks here on radar. So we may have two additional touchdowns within this cell. Heading toward Estrell Beach again, and then also heading a little closer then to the shoreline here. You've got Maple Beach heading to the east. So, yeah, you've got, you have several different spots here that are looking at strong areas of rotation. That really does look like Metro we Airport have two more. Metro Airport is reporting uh, wind gusts of 58 miles per hour. So still 58. Yes. Okay, so 58 right near the severe limits there for Metro Airport. Two separate spots that may be debris signatures that match up with our rotation that we can see on radar. So this would be one, two, potentially three, four separate touchdowns that we're dealing with tonight. These are hopefully going to be the two last ones. And then still, yeah, okay, good, that's dissipating, good. Yes. So we had a little bit of lowering on our tower cam. I just wanted to look at real quickly, but oh, there's another spot. All right, so we have the two tornado worn cells right now. One again heading towards Stony Point, another one heading toward the east here, uh, Trenton, you've got Gross Eel as well. You can see now moving over Gross Eel, out over the water. Those two tornado worn cells are probably gonna be canceled here very shortly because that's almost done. Then we've got the severe thunderstorm warnings here up to the north. Uh, Oakland has been canceled. Oakland has been canceled, perfect. Correct. All right, Oakland's canceled. We've got Macomb, oh, let's bring this in wide out, there it is. So we've got Macomb and St. Clair counties. Those two warnings here, we've got Lenaway and Monroe and Wayne counties, those are still severe warn cells. 
with 60 to 70 mile an hour winds, and we still have these two tornado warned cells again that have been moving toward the Estro Beach area and over Trenton and Gros Eel, and those are both still ones that had very strong signs of rotation and are now throwing the signatures, the debris signatures out over the water. All right, so those are out over the water. Good, so those do not have another chance to try and spin up. If you're in the tornado warned cells, or tornado warned areas there north of Monroe, including Gibraltar, Trenton, Gross Eel, um, you should be fine within those spots now. You should be good because that's out over the water. You have a chance to clear out. Let's bring this back up. All right, and then just peeking for another look. Actually, if we can take our tracker shot full as well, I want to take the tracker shot full. He's actually stuck right now in traffic on 96, moving westbound. So you can see a lot of that activity continuing to move through. What are, what's the, um, the, the speed that some of these storms are, have been moving recently? Uh, you had one earlier that was moving at almost 60 miles per hour. But yes. what, was, what was one of the recent ones that's still moving? Macomb and St. Clair were just canceled. Perfect. The severe thunderstorm warnings. And the, uh, this one was moving at 55 miles per hour okay. in, in Wayne, so in Monroe, in Wayne. So they're really still holding on to some stronger speeds, which is good. It's trying to weaken a little bit as well. Um, but once we get into the rest of the night here and these get a chance to clear out a bit more, we're almost done, everybody. We're almost there. This has been a potent line of storms with prolific lightning and several tornado touchdowns, including one out near Plainfield in Grand Rapids, or outside of Grand Rapids, another touchdown out near uh, Williamston, west of Livingston County that moved out toward Howell. You had another touchdown potentially near uh, Salem that moved toward Plymouth and Canton. You had two more that may have touched down near Estrell Beach and out near Trenton. So several different cells that showed actual debris signatures on radar tonight. And we still have these two warnings in effect that aren't quite expired just yet. But that's what we're looking at right there. So we're so close for that being done as that continues to move a little further to the east here. All right. That one's moving down to the southeast, holding on to some stronger wind gusts there. We do have, again, some severe thunderstorm warnings right there. Right, as that continues to move a little further to the east as well. Uh, main part with that is now a lot of strong straight line wind gusts. That's the main one, but we're not in the base for straight line winds. We're still dealing with 70 mile an hour wind gusts. And there hasn't been an update to trying to get rid of the, the severe thunderstorm warning for uh, Macomb County yet or anything, has there? Or, or are they just starting to cancel some of those? They are just starting to cancel those. Just starting, okay, so Macomb County getting that warning canceled. Let's Saint build Claire up well. just. How many outages? 103,000. 103,000. So we've crossed the century mark. We're at 103,000 outages, according to DTE now, that we're having to deal with. So let's pop up just the warnings. So you've got a warning for Wayne, southeastern Washtenaw, Lenaway, Monroe counties. The two tornado warned cells, though, that area of rotation is over the water. So those should hopefully be canceled shortly. I would, I'm kind of surprised they're actually still there because those ones should be allowed to be gotten rid of. If you're in that spot, we've made a lot of improvement to getting that out over the water and finally getting rid of some of that area of rotation. But again, still strong winds. You can see these bright areas of red, bright areas of green that show stronger gusts still pushing through including Lenaway County off to the west. You've got Monroe County, Petersburg, south of Dundee, 23, all the way over. So you've got the roads that go right from 23 to 24, including at down near Bedford, where some strong winds are pushing through at the moment with a lot of heavy rainfall. Up toward Livonia, the warning for Washtenaw should probably be allowed to be trimmed down here shortly. They just continued Lenaway and Washtenaw. The storm was located over Tecumseh, moving southeast at 45 miles per hour. Gotcha. Okay, so they're going to leave that one in effect as the it rides Monroe along. tornado warning has been canceled. Perfect. All right, good. So that one was canceled. We still have the one tornado warning left that they haven't gotten rid of, and that one should hopefully be canceled shortly because that one no longer has rotation on land. That one's moving out over the water. Now our attention turns to the leftover straight line along with the intense amount of lightning. And also I wanna show this because this is something we've already been talking about water. You said there was water over Gratiot actually a little earlier. So roads already being covered with rainfall. And if we look at some of the rain that we've already had so far, 
it's still trying to catch up. So you can see that the rain here has not caught up with it just yet showing where that's really been trying to build its way on in. But some of these rainfall amounts, as we continue to add them on, have really been almost two inches, two inches, two and a half inches, a lot of rain really picking up within some of these individual spots. And that is going to be a concern as well as we go into the rest of the night. Uh, last tornado warning was just canceled, it looks like. That looks like it's off the map. Did they finally just get rid of that? Yes, and they've canceled the severe thunderstorm watch for Lapeer, Livingston, Macomb, Oakland, St. Clair, Shiawassee. Perfect. All those, all those counties have been canceled. The north, north, anywhere north of the line, those ones have been canceled. We're going to take a look, another look at some of the rotation. We've got another minute or two left before we're actually going to be, I think we're going to be all right because we're going to get ready then for our 11 o'clock broadcast on CBS. So if you're watching us on WKBD, you'll have to switch over to CBS. However, if you're watching us on the live stream, you don't need to go anywhere. You can stay with the live stream and our 11 o'clock newscast will take over just within minutes after we end here in a moment. So you do not need to switch off the stream. We're gonna stick with that. We've got about two minutes before we get ready to switch the over here to The watch for yes. Lenaway, Monroe, Washtenaw, and Wayne continues until 1 a.m. So they're keeping that still. Yes. All right, so 1 a.m. for the watch still while those warnings are in effect. I would expect that while this line moves out over Lake Erie within the next half an hour to 40 minutes, that watch will be able to be oh, canceled. They just shortly. canceled it. They did just cancel <laughs> they it? They just canceled Perfect. it. Perfect. All right. So that watch has been canceled. So we're making improvements now going on through the rest of the evening. We have baseline severe storms for Lenaway, Monroe, and Wayne counties. And I think. Those are the only ones, aside from Southern Washtenaw there, still another one, while the heavier storms are now moving on into Ontario and into Northern Ohio. That band, very strong, still moving its way down to the southeast. And you can see damage reports have been slowly starting to come on in. We have another one that actually just came up to the north in Fenton, large diameter tree limbs down uh, across the roadway near Long Lake Road. And then again, we still had that damage report off to the west. Those cars flipped. You saw the semi that was flipped earlier from the camera from our tracker. So still a lot of issues. And actually, I don't know if we can take our, cam our tracker cam one more time and be able to show everybody what's going on while he's been really kind of moving along I-96 out that way where there's a lot of that damage left over, unfortunately, from that tornado warning earlier that, l that absolutely touched down. So multiple to different tornado touchdowns this evening. Several of these severe thunderstorm warnings with 80 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts well above the baseline. Several thousand lightning strikes even at single moments as this line has been moving through. And we still have a couple of warnings left, but we're almost done for the evening. So stick with us on the stream and on TV, switch over to CBS Detroit, and we will join you there in just a moment for our 11 o'clock broadcast as we continue our severe weather coverage.
Now, from CBS News Detroit, this is a next weather alert update. Tornadoes touching down, leaving a path of destruction all across Michigan. This is a look at our next weather tracker in Howell, where there is significant damage from tonight's storm. You can actually see the power of this storm as lightning lit up the sky all night. This video was actually taken from our tower cam just outside of our CBS News Detroit studio. This storm is extremely dangerous. Governor Gretchen Whitmer already declaring a state of emergency. Good evening and welcome to CBS News Detroit at 11 o'clock. I'm Terrell Bailey. Let's go ahead and not waste any time and get an update from next weather forecaster Stacy Duford. So Stacy, take it away. Well, we spent the last hour and a half watching these storms move through the area. As you said, we are getting reports of lots of damage. We've got roads closed. We've got uh, flooding in the area. Taking a look at the radar here, we're still seeing these systems move out. So we're still getting some heavy rain out there. We're still seeing some lightning, maybe even a few, hearing a few rumbles of thunder. Taking a look at the radar, you see that system moving out of the area, heading over the water. And we are going to see that continue to move out throughout the overnight hours. We will wake up under mostly cloudy skies on Friday morning, and we will see things clearing out throughout the day on Friday. Now these storms, again, that we were watching, uh, we did see some wind damage, we saw some hail, we saw lots of flooding. We're still getting reports on all of the damage from these storms throughout the evening. And we are going to see uh, your morning commute tomorrow could be a little bit slow. We're already getting reports of flooding on 75 at 696. And uh, Haggerty Road in West Bloomfield completely shut down at Maple Road. That is because of downed power lines. So you might want to allow a little extra time for your commute tomorrow morning. When you wake up and head out, you're going to find mostly cloudy conditions, temperatures, in the 70s. We're still expecting to see lots of humidity sticking around for the day tomorrow. And it is move-in day at U of M and Eastern, also up at Michigan Tech. They're expecting to see a little bit rain up there, but we are expecting drier conditions for anybody moving their student in this weekend. 75 degrees for Saturday, partly cloudy skies if you're taking a college student back. 75 under mostly sunny skies for Sunday. And for tonight, 73 degrees for the low. Again, those storms continuing to move out of the area for Friday. We're going to see a high near 82 degrees. We'll see those clouds decreasing throughout the day. And again, good news for the weekend. We're going to see more sunshine. We're going to see those humidity levels come down. And then for Kids on Monday, 77 degrees under mostly sunny skies. All right, I know a lot of students are looking forward to that cool down, Stacy. Well, right now, tens of thousands of people are without power. DTE is reporting around 103,000 customers without power. We want to go ahead to our Kelly Vaughn now. She's joining us live outside of our studio in Southfield with more on the damage that we're seeing in the area. Kelly, what can you tell us at the hour? Well, Terrell, if you guys had come out to me just about 10 minutes ago, I would have been standing here in a downpour. But um, at this point, it's cleared up. The rain stopped. We're still seeing a ton of lightning out here. But just because the rain stopped here in Southfield does not mean the danger is clear because those roads are still treacherous. And it's not just the roads in the air as well. I am unhappy to report that all of the flights out of Detroit Metropolitan Airport until 2 a.m., all of the flights have been delayed. Um, so any flight up to 2 a.m., you're going to see a delay. Other flights have been canceled. So if you have any flights um, coming up. Just be prepared for delays or cancellations. And then out on the roads, we're seeing damage. We're seeing flooded roadways. We've gotten multiple reports of semi trucks being overturned, traffic backups, cars um, that have been pushed off the roadway. We've got police investigating reports of overturned cars. And um, we also have multiple closures on the interstate that I want to let you know about real quick. I-75 southbound south of 696 closed for water on the roadway. Also southbound 275 at I-94 closed there because that's an area we've seen flooding consistently. We're also monitoring down trees and down power lines. So uh, your best bet is going to be to stay indoors to stay safe tonight. I'll send it back to y'all inside. Thank you so much for that, Kelly. Meantime, though, the trial for the last three suspects in the 2020 plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer is underway. Eric Mulliter and brothers William and Michael Null are each charged with providing material support for terrorist acts as well as illegally possessing a firearm. These three are among more than a dozen men who were charged in the kidnapping conspiracy. The elaborate plot included plans to abduct the governor from her vacation home and put her on so-called 
assault trial for treason in hopes of triggering a civil war. Prosecutors say they were motivated by anger over the 2020 presidential election, as well as COVID restrictions imposed by the governor. All three have pleaded not guilty. They face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Then the voting period for the UAW members to authorize a strike ended tonight. That means we will know whether that strike was authorized as early as tomorrow. It comes as the union's contract with the big three automakers expires next month. Early returns showed overwhelming support for that strike authorization. The union is demanding a 46% pay increase over four years, a 32-hour work week, and improved benefits. UAW President Sean Fain has indicated there won't be any extensions once the contract expires on September the 14th. Then a Canton woman nearly fell to her death after her car was left hanging from an overpass. You may have seen the viral video showing the woman's car. Tonight, that woman spoke to our Ibrahim Samra and shares how she's alive after a hit and run she thought she'd never survive. When you're way up on the overpass and your car is hanging over the side. It's a video that's been viewed more than 10 million times online. And it's like the, mo you know, the movie where you see the car and all of a sudden it topples over and falls down, you know, wherever it goes. So I'm thinking I'm going to be killed and then I'm going to land on somebody and kill somebody else below. That's what was going through my mind. And every time Canton mother of two, Marlena Morelli, watches it, it brings her to tears. Have you watched the video? Oh, I did. And I, I try not to because I, I get I, I break down. You know, I keep thinking I have children. I have a 26 year old and a 29 year old. I mean, they could have been going to their mother's funeral. While driving down M14 on Friday, August 18th, Mara Lena says she was hit by another driver. All of a sudden, I just felt a boom on my driver's side. And after that, I just didn't see anything. Before she knew it, her car was teetering more than 30 feet above the freeway. My car was hanging. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was gonna, my car was going to tip over and I would fall to my death. The driver at fault, fleeing. But right when Marlena thought she had no chance to make it out alive, a door opened on her passenger side. And by the grace of God, a man stopped. He was with his son, pulled over down on M14, ran up the hill, and pulled me out of the car. Marlena was able to walk away from the hit and run with bumps, bruises, and some soreness. But Marlena says what sticks with her is watching back how someone could hit her and drive away. At the hit and run, they'd never caught the person. And I'm very, very thankful that I'm alive. And thank you to that person who pulled me out of my car. Reporting for CBS News Detroit, I'm Ibrahim Samra. Wow, a scary story for sure. Then a federal judge tossed a Republican National Committee lawsuit that accused Google of filtering its campaign emails to Gmail users' spam folders. The RNC filed the lawsuit last October and claimed the popular search engine was discriminating against it for its political views. The committee argued that filtering could hurt its fundraising efforts. In his ruling, the judge wrote the RNC didn't have enough evidence that Google acted in bad faith by filtering their messages into spam folders. Then Donald Trump is heading back to his New Jersey golf club. After posting bond in Atlanta today, the former president surrendered to authorities on felony charges that he conspired to overturn the 2020 presidential election results in Georgia. Christian Benavidez is outside the jail with the latest tonight. Donald Trump departed Atlanta Thursday evening after a motorcade took him to the Fulton County Jail. There he was booked 13 felony charges for his alleged efforts to reverse his 2020 election loss in Georgia. What has taken place here is a travesty of justice. Inside the jail, he posted a $200,000 bond, was fingerprinted, and a first for a former U.S. president had his mugshot taken. I got Kool-Aid here for you. Outside the jail, there were some Trump critics, but a larger group of supporters. He's being persecuted. The charges stem from this January 2nd, 2021 conversation with Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. You should be able to challenge an election. I thought the election was a rigged election. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis asked the judge to set a trial date of October 23rd. The Trump legal team has already objected to that date. 
essentially saying they're not looking for a speedy trial. For Trump, I think it is helpful to delay. For other people, that might not be the case. All 19 defendants in this case were given until noon on Friday to surrender. Several have already shown up, including Trump's former personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and Trump's former White House chief of staff, Mark Meadows. The Fulton County prosecution is the fourth criminal case against Trump, the Republican frontrunner in the 2024 presidential campaign. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Atlanta. Well, coming up, we have an update on the people now facing charges in connection to the alleged kidnapping of newborn twins. And we're going to continue to see these storms moving out throughout the overnight hours. Look for drier conditions for Friday. I'll let you know about the weekend ahead in our next look at weather. Get more news and next weather now. CBS News Detroit is streaming whenever you need us. Download Pluto TV free on your connected TV or smartphone. Scroll to local news, choose CBS News Detroit, and don't forget to add us to your favorites. At Drive Time, we made this 30-second ad to show all of you, and you, that in as little as 30 seconds, you can start shopping thousands of cars and customize your payments to fit your budget all on your phone, now with no hit to your credit when you shop online. Wait, no credit hit. Now when you shop online with DriveTime.com, you can do a lot in a little time. Like I can shop thousands of cars and customize my payments without impacting my credit. Yeah, it's that easy. Ooh, I like this one. No, I like this one. <gasps> Go to DriveTime.com and do a lot in not a lot of time. Summer is ending, but the savings are endless at Bob's Discount Furniture. And this Labor Day weekend, I'm throwing a summer send-off celebration with 6, 12, 30, and 60-month financing options and new everyday low prices and highly rated living rooms, best-selling bedrooms, stylish dining sets, and of course, my world-famous Bobopedic mattresses. Plus entertainment and yummy treats for the kiddos. It's gonna be great. Great indeed, Balloon Bob. So join the fun at my summer send-off celebration this Labor Day weekend in all my stores. Honestly, guys, I used to never wear underwear. Skims changed that. Our Fits Everybody underwear is made from this buttery soft fabric that stretches out and bounces right back. It just molds to your body like you're wearing nothing at all. This is Skims. Powerful stories. Impactful investigations. How many times has your car been stolen? Five times. Yeah. What? And a little bit of fun. Your face is in the pool. On Inside Edition Streaming. You're watching CBS News Detroit. Welcome back. Three Detroiters are now charged in the kidnapping of the newborn twins that started Monday's Amber Alert. The three were arraigned in Livonia today. Kelly Vaughn reports from outside of the courthouse with more on what led to the abduction. The three are each facing eight felony charges. The prosecutor says the female suspect befriended the mother of the newborns with the intention of stealing the babies. And the two male suspects allegedly helped her kidnap the twins. 23-year-old Chantel Jones, 18-year-old Curtis Slay, and 19-year-old Davion Chandler are all facing charges, including kidnapping and unlawful imprisonment. You're here today on an eight-count felony complaint. You have the right to remain silent. The three appeared virtually in front of the judge. Each stood mute to the charges, meaning they didn't admit nor deny guilt. The judge denied bond to all three. Bond in this matter is denied. This matter is uh, extremely serious according to the allegations. The first two counts of the complaint, actually the first three counts of the complaint, involve the possibility of life in prison. The charges stem from the abduction of newborn twins, Montana and Matthew Bridges, that prompted Monday's Amber Alert. The twins were taken from a quality inn in Livonia Sunday night, where they were staying with their mother. The mother told police that she had left the babies with two women she had described as friendly acquaintances, but the women and the babies were gone when she got back to the motel. 
By 9.30 Monday morning, the babies had been safely dropped off at the Detroit Police Department. There was a fourth arrest in the case. The prosecutor says it is a juvenile. Their case is currently being reviewed and a charging decision will be released next week. As for what's next for the three that were in court, they will each have a probable cause conference next week. Reporting in Livonia, Kelly Vaughn, CBS News, Detroit. Thanks for that, Kelly. And we've got a recall tonight. This one coming from Trader Joe's. The company says its multi-grain crackers with sunflowers and flax seeds may contain metal. The recalled boxes have best if used by dates from March the 1st until the 5th of 2024. Customers who have one should simply throw it out or return it to Trader Joe's for a full refund. So far, no injuries have been reported. Now, just last month, Trader Joe's recalled two types of cookies because they might contain rocks. I'm pretty sure nobody wants to bite into that. Well, now we've got Stacy Dufour joining us now. So Stacy, look, we have seen thunderstorm warnings pretty much for the last several hours as we enter those nighttime hours, one, two o'clock in the morning. What can we expect? Well, we're going to see those storms moving out. We did see a couple tornadoes touch down, especially yeah. out near Lansing. In fact, 96 westbound is closed at Weberville okay. Road because there's overturned semis there. There was a lot of damage. Also, 75 southbound closed at 696 because mm -hmm. of flooding over the roadway. Okay. We are going to see this moving out throughout the overnight hours. That is the good news. We've gotten through the worst of it. And taking a look at current conditions, you can see some of us still seeing some stormy conditions out there. And that is going to continue for the next hour or two. And also you can see temperatures have dropped about 20 degrees in the last four hours. Now also we are looking at flood alerts. Rouge River at Dearborn. It is going to be up to uh, the flood stage, hit 11 feet this afternoon. We're expecting it to crest around midnight at 12 and a half feet. That is an area to avoid. Lots of flooding around the areas. If, you, if you're driving around and you see flooding in the roadway, Turn around, don't drown. 73 degrees for our low tonight. We're going to see those storms moving out. And then for Friday, 82 degrees for the high. Clouds slightly decreasing throughout the day. We are going to see mostly cloudy conditions. And again, here's a look at the radar. We're seeing those stormy conditions moving off to the east. Still going to see rain for another hour or two. Taking a look at the future cast here. Again, we see that system moving off. And then we're going to see mostly cloudy skies through the overnight hours. Waking up under mostly cloudy conditions on Friday could see a few random showers moving through throughout the day and then finally by the end of the day partly cloudy skies that is setting us up for nights or conditions for the weekend and again speaking of driving you may want to allow a little extra time for your commute tomorrow morning temperature is going to be in the low 70s we're going to see mostly cloudy skies but again you could encounter some flooding also we are aware that Haggerty Road at Maple Road in West Bloomfield, there's downed power lines there. You may encounter that in other areas. Just allow a little extra time for your commute tomorrow and be safe while you are traveling. Now, we are going to see humid conditions stick around for the day on Friday. Then we're going to get much more comfortable over the weekend. Remain mostly comfortable for the beginning of the week. And we are going to see temperatures dropping as well, expecting a high near 82 degrees for Friday. Then and really cooling down temperatures in the mid 70s over the weekend 77 at the beginning of the week and then look at Wednesday next week 72 degrees for the high but the weekend is looking gorgeous 75 degrees under partly cloudy skies for Saturday that's good news if you're moving a college student back to their campus also on Sunday 75 degrees under mostly sunny skies and as I said it's going to be a lot less humid out there it's going to feel a lot more comfortable now Monday is the first day back to school for a lot of kids. We're expecting mostly sunny skies, a high near 77 degrees. It's going to be a little chilly in the morning, 55 degrees overnight heading into Monday. They might need a light jacket when they're heading off to school, but you're going to have very nice conditions to get that back to school picture, that first day of school picture outdoors on Monday morning. Expecting to see lots of sunshine for most of the week. We do have a slight chance of some isolated storms moving in on Tuesday, but we're expecting very comfortable temperatures and lots of sunshine for the weekend and for most of next week. And we are going to see those storms moving out again tonight. So again, don't drive through any water. Yeah. Be careful of out course. there. <laughs> Turn around. Turn don't around, drown. don't drown. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> all right. I feel like I've just been giving advice all night long. Let me tell you, Stacy and the entire <laughs> Next Weather team, they have been working diligently just trying to give you all the most accurate information that you all need. And I think everybody, for the most part, listened. Yeah. I liked it. All right, so now we're going to bring in sports anchor Ronnie Duncan. Ronnie, you were in Gross Point earlier today. Uh, it looks like you didn't get rained on, right? I didn't get rained on TV, but I saw a lot of TDs. So that means TV, Terrell Bailey, Come on and touchdowns. Nothing <laughs> like the debut of high school football here in Michigan. One game I checked out was Fowler taking on Liggett, and it was a 51-14 to 14 blowout, and uh, it was plays like this. Yes, the Knights spoiled the home debut. You know, Andre Risen was filling in as the head coach, a former Michigan State great, an NFL star, had a rude introduction to the coaching world. But afterwards, I talked to him about inspiring these young people. I never thought I'd see you as a coach, but I knew you had the genius to be one. How much fun is it out for you to be out here with these young kids? Man, it's awesome. Uh, awesome to see you again, too. Yeah. You know, it's been a long time, but um, it's funny that we meet here at Gross Point. <laughs> How about that? Hey, look, you know the Lions are here, right here, CBS Detroit. Friday, you can see it right here, prime time. You know, while the Lions have to make a lot of cuts after Friday's game, one coach in Ann Arbor has one of those fresh and crispy cuts. One thing you notice immediately anytime you see Juwan Howard is how groomed he is. I'm talking about his haircut. Hey, coach, who's cutting that hair? Like, I like to be groomed. And uh, it always started back when I was a you know, young kid growing up. And is that Chicago in you? It is definitely Chicago. And, you know, we, we always you know, portray like, you know, we like to look good. Obviously, his days as a Michigan player, he still had that sharp look. And so did the entire team. Coach, did you have something to do with that, too? When you look good, you feel good, you play good, you know, you work harder. And uh, that's always been my mantra. And, and with that, uh, I've also grew up uh, being a barber in the neighborhood. So that was like my hustle. That's the way I earned money, you know, as I was growing up. So I used to cut people in my neighborhood, whether it was uh, the kids in the neighborhood, the adults in the neighborhood. So then when I moved on to college, uh, at times, I used to cut my own hair as well as my teammates' hair. Yeah, so I, I'm, a, I'm a not only a basketball coach, but I'm a barber. And, you know, that's my second job. He is when so you, smooth around the edges, my friend. Come on now, he, when you look good, you feel good. Look at you. Look at you. Look at me. <laughs> Coming up, we'll answer the question, what does Kim Kardashian's daughter Northwest have in common with a pro wrestler? That story and more <laughs> coming up next. Are you sweating over high energy bills? Windows drafty or broken? Champion is here to help. With our 70th anniversary sale, buy two windows, get two free. At Champion, we design new windows specific to your home's needs. Then they are built in our very own factory. Installed by a team of professionals and guaranteed for a lifetime by our best-in-class warranty. Buy two windows, get two free. Call or book your free estimate online at championmyhome.com. What are you doing? I'm applying for a credit card on Credit Karma. They have this thing called the Karma Guarantee. It's sort of like a card fairy. If you apply for a credit card that has the Karma Guarantee and you don't get approved, <laughs> the card fairy will slip 50 bucks under your pillow. Is he coming tonight? Nope. Just got approved. The card fairy will just have to rummage around in someone else's fridge. Get approved or get 50 bucks on offers with the Karma Guarantee. I'm Mr. Wonderful, and I'm Chef Wonderful. I recently introduced the ERC program to Chef Wonderful here, which is a program created towards small businesses like mine for retaining their employees during the pandemic. Well done, and most of this money is still available. If there's one thing Wonderfuls never do, it's leave, leave money, money on, on the, the table. table. It's you. Oh, wow, this guy is smart. Go to wondertrust.com now to see if you're eligible for this cash. Nice hat. Yo, yo, dude, you, you need some help? Don't worry about me. Yo, there's, there's no shame. You don't know my family, man. My parents or brothers or sisters or cousins ever found out. Dude, this weight is pretty heavy. I just need some time and I'll figure it out myself, okay? Sometimes you just need some help. So if you need therapy, find a licensed therapist at BetterHelp.com. 
Why did you want to share your story? Water up this high? Where are these coming from? That's the million dollar question. I'm a very curious person. I wake up every morning asking what's happening in the world? Why is this happening? And how do we answer that question on the CBS Evening News? News Detroit. Welcome back, everyone. Kim Kardashian and her 10-year-old daughter are giving a new meaning to playing with your hair. Move over, Rapunzel. Northwest is laying down her long locks. Here's Jeannie Moose. When Kim Kardashian's kid North headed to the Far East, Japan, mom and daughter started posting videos like this. <laughs> Featuring 10-year-old North's extensive hair extensions. They even posted photos of North walking with her friend, carrying North's coiled braids. Things got even hairier. Why settle for just jumping rope? Come on, keep it going. When you can jump rope using your daughter's braids still attached to her head. Kim and North titled this TikTok video, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, Jump Through My Hair. <laughs> Rapunzel used her hair to tie up the prince and swing like Tarzan did from vines. The Kardashians stuck to jumping rope, but they weren't the first. This world wrestling entertainment star used her own braid as a jump rope. Bianca Belair! Be afraid of this braid. Her opponents yank it at their own risk. Oh! Bianca even whips them with her braid. Sort of makes using a braid to jump rope seem like child's play. Ginny Most, CNN, New York. All right, from some of the biggest stars of today to the biggest stars of the 60s and 70s, the Rolling Stones are teasing a big announcement. Those details up ahead. We're using way too many platforms for work. We're not using that many. That's our project management platform. That is for sales. Oh, 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 what? that's for suppliers. We have different platforms for HR, CRM, projects, marketing. We should just use Monday.com. Unify the way you work into a single platform with Monday.com. Manage anything, such as projects, marketing, and sales, and work more efficiently than ever. Learn more at Monday.com. Daniel Cameron's attacks on Governor Bashir are wrong. I spent 32 years in law enforcement. Bashir followed Trump's lead for early release of nonviolent offenders during COVID. Andy Bashir is the best governor for law enforcement in my lifetime. He don't preach party. More state troopers, raises for cops, and anything that we need. Bashir gets it done. I'm a Republican, and Andy Bashir is doing everything he can to keep our community safe. And we can count on him to have our backs. I just don't want to lower my standards, you know? Oh, why should you? It can't go any lower. Girl, check this out. She is the blueprint. Get who gets you. eHarmony. Get started for free. It's time to lose the weight for good. Try Golo. No subscriptions, just real results that last. I've lost 70 pounds, 58 pounds, 22 pounds, 128 pounds, 138 pounds in nine months. Crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's time to put dieting behind you and get your health and vitality back. Once you start this plan and you do what you are supposed to do, you are going to feel amazing. You're going to have a new life. Change your life now at Golo.com. On Face the Nation, we don't just ask the basic questions. We try to understand what's at the heart of the issue we're talking about. I'm a voracious consumer of information, and I'm impatient. I don't like to be spun.
watching CBS News Detroit. Well, if you are a fan of the Rolling Stones, new music could be coming. Here's why. Check out this fake ad in a local London newspaper. At first glance, the ad looks like a promotion for a new business, Hackney Diamonds. But if you look a little closer, though, you can see references to several of the band's biggest hits. Hackney Diamonds supposedly opens for business in early September, something fans believe is a hint of the album's title and release date. A new album would be the Rolling Stones' 31st studio album and their first since their drummer, Charlie Watts, died in 2021. Also tonight, NASA wants organizations to apply for their own moon tree. They're just like regular ones, but moon trees are grown from seeds that flew around the moon. Seems cool, right? Nearly 2,000 seeds were on the Artemis mission last year. They include sycamore, sweet gum, and pine trees. The Forest Service has germinated them into seedlings that are ready to be planted. Organizations like schools, museums, science centers, and community groups can apply for one. You have until October the 6th. Stick with us, Metro Detroit CBS News at 11 o'clock. We'll be right back. You ever bought Reese's while eating Reese's? That is some boss behavior. Why did we stuff Reese's Take 5 with five flavors? Because you can't handle six! I came from a low-income family that was, that was struggling. You see how hard life can get. GC became a part of my life because I don't want my family to fall back into that. I never thought education would take me this far. I'm still young. I still have a lot to do in my life. And I just want to get things done the way I want with a good education I'm in. I'm Stacy, and Grand Canyon University helped me find my purpose. As parents, we pay out the for school. So here's a novel idea. Just spend less on your kids. Amazon has great deals on everything kids need. Instead of spending more, he spent less. Why would a person spend more money? He's eight and he gets it. I'm ten. Hmm, that's less impressive. Spending less costs less, financially. I spend less on my grandkids. <laughs> and they don't even know it. So spend less on your kids with Amazon's back-to-school deals. It's fiscally advantageous. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Lock in. Get ready for it. Flank left. <clears throat> Two times faster hydration than water alone. If only your internet was that fast. Liquid IV. Real hydrating. Sloppy collar, rough fabric, boxy fit. We may need to operate. Is it terminal? It's not you. It's your shirt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Clear! <sighs> How do I get all of my t-shirts to look like this? True Classic makes shirts you'll actually want to wear. A tighter fit around your arms and chest, but loosen the torso to make big guys look slimmer and slimmer guys look buffer. And hot guys look hotter. <laughs> Modern medicine's amazing, isn't it? Da -da 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 -da. Welcome back. Well, the biggest movie of the summer is going to an even bigger big screen. Barbie is heading to IMAX for one week starting September the 22nd. That's according to Warner Brothers. The studio says certain theaters in North America and abroad will have it. As a bonus, we're learning the IMAX version will have some added footage. Barbie is the hit of the summer, already grossing more than $1.3 billion. Wow. That officially makes it the highest grossing movie at the domestic box office this year. Stacy, Ronnie, have you all seen the movie yet? I know I haven't. 
Oh, you have to see it. <laughs> it's so good. And I will be going to see it on IMAX. All right. So Stacey Duvore, <laughs> Dufour, she's telling everybody they need to go check the movie out. So Stacey, what's going on, though, with this severe weather, potentially? OK, we are going to see any remaining storms clearing out throughout the overnight hours. We're getting reports from DTE over 330,000 people without power right now. Lots of downed power yeah. lines and trees on the roadways, lots of flooding. So do be cautious during your commute tomorrow morning. But the good news is we do start to dry out starting tomorrow. The humidity levels go down over the weekend, and we're going to see some sunshine. I guess for you, you know, you have sports games and things tomorrow. Do you feel like the weather will potentially be impeding on that? Well, it won't happen in Carolina because we're playing the Carolina Panthers on CBS News The Choice. I'm looking forward to it. Come on now, everybody. All right, well, thank you for joining us at 11 o'clock. The Late Show of Stephen Colbert is coming up next. Of course, we'll see you back here in the morning starting at 5 o'clock.